Welcome. I'm Star. This is my tutorial on how to make accurate five-pointed stars for quilting and for any other fabric application. We're talking about the type of star that you're going to see on the American flag and in military designs, in lots of sports paraphernalia and patriotic decorations. This five-pointed star is not what you usually see in quilting because those angles are very difficult to measure out. It's very different than the usual eight-pointed star that we put in our blocks. But with the help of OmniGrid, I was able to design a ruler that can be used for rotary cutting where you can get the angles and the measurements for all the pieces of this five-pointed star that's pieced into a pentagram. Now, you can use it for applique or you can use it for piecing. You can piece the pentagram and then applique it on another quilt background, or you can piece the pentagrams together until the type of quilt I have behind me. So there's no end of creative things that you'll be able to think of to do with this five-pointed star. I wanted to show you also that Ruler makes five different sizes of the star. This great big one, which will be the one that we'll be making in the tutorial today. A little bit smaller, medium-sized, and then a tiny star. When this tiny star is pieced together into a full-size quilt, it can be very impressive indeed. And all of these sizes can be made using this ruler. So, let's get started. Our stars are made up of two different shapes, points and diamonds. On the ruler, on the left-hand side, you have the shapes for the diamonds. And here up in this corner you'll see the pentagon block with the diamonds in black. So these are the directions you'll use for making the diamonds. On the left side of the ruler are the lines for making the points. And here you have a point and going down in each section there are points showing that this is the area that you use. Now we use both these sections for cutting the points. Now, when you assemble your quilt, the points come together with the short seams in the middle and the diamonds set in between them like that. And when you have five points and five diamonds that forms your five-pointed star. In the directions, this particular block is called the ten-piece star. Each ruler comes with complete directions for the ten-piece star pentagon block, and then for a chubby star and a pointy star. These are simply the same pieces that are put together in different combinations. If you get five of the diamonds, you'll have a chubby five-pointed star. And if you put together five of the points, you'll have the pointy star. Beginning with the diamonds, in the instructions that come with the Star Stars Ruler, you'll see instructions for the chubby five-pointed star, as you see it coming together here. And here are the fabric widths that we're going to need. As with any rotary cutting, we're going to work with strips of fabric cut in certain widths. So for the large star, we need a width of four and a half inches 
of fabric. Now, of course, we could get a regular ruler and cut four and a half inches, but it just happens that we can use the star stars ruler like this, lining up this line for the large diamond with the freshly cut edge up your fabric and then cut here. And you have four and a half inches. Similarly, if you were making the smaller stars using the smaller diamonds, each of these marks would be the width for the respective diamonds. Now, we need to cut like this. So, just like that. Line up the fabric strip with two lines. Now I'm going to move this so I can come right up here and cut right there. Now because I'm with the camera, I'm going to be cutting a little bit backwards. And that is discarded. Now, turn the ruler around. Never flip the ruler over so that you can't read my name on it. Always use the ruler so that the words are right side up. So, we line it. That's where we just made the cut. So we turn it, line up those edges, and now we cut right here. And I'll try not to knock the camera over. There's your diamond. Now, if you had stacked your fabric up, like we often do for a speed rotary cutting, you could work with a stack of five layers of fabric, and just like that, you'd have five diamonds. You want to be very careful if folding over the fabrics, because if you have a stripe, as we often have in Stars and Stripes, or a directional pattern, if it's flipped when you're cutting, those stripes are not going to go the way you expect them to go. So I find it's always best when working with a stack of fabrics to arrange them right sides up in the entire stack. So that's the diamonds. Now, here are the points. And as you might guess, the points are just a little bit more complicated, but not by much. Follow the directions in the ruler insert and it'll come together just like that. So here we have pointy five-pointed star, large star, the fabric strip you'll need is two and seven eighths inches. In the center panel of the instructions we have the ten piece star and here you have the measurements for both the diamonds and the point strip. So four and a half inches for the diamonds, two and seven eight strips for the points. Now again, it is possible to line up your fabric And this point tells you the width that you need. So you could come here with another ruler, line that up, and you could cut right along there. I find that is not the easiest way to do it. I find the easiest way is to just use the regular ruler to begin with. And you probably know this trick. I measured out 
found the two and seven eighths inch mark on my ruler and put a strip of masking tape. That way I know where it is every time I go to make a cut and I know that I'll be accurate every time. And there we are. So that's the width of the ship. Now the fun part starts. Now we'll go ahead and show you how to cut these points. We're going to line up this line with the edge of the fabric strip. You want to be sure and get this point on the fabric and this point on the very edge. Now we're going to cut this long side of the point. Discard that little piece. Slide the ruler. Now we could go right ahead and cut there, but we'd be losing a big chunk of fabric. And as I told you already, you never want to turn the ruler over like that. Actually, you will not get an accurate angle if you do that. So if we don't turn the ruler, we can turn the fabric. Once again, this is why if you're working with a stack, it's good to have them all facing the same way, all the right sides up. So now we cut this angle, and so I don't knock over the camera. I'm going to adjust it just a bit so I can get my hand in here. There. Turn the fabric over one more time. Match that point. Now you can see how it's coming out. And this will be the only little tiny scrap that's wasted. Okay, now we can go right down this strip. And we can do that again, like this, like we just did, or what does that angle look like? Fit it on like that. Can I get it a little closer? Move a little bit without knocking over the camera. There, can you see that? By turning the fabric strip around, once again, very tiny strip is cut away. And then here, this camera just gets in the way all the time. There we go. Now, even though this little bit of fabric falls off the edge, we didn't make we wanted the ruler to be even six inches wide. We didn't want to take it out six and a half. But that's no matter at all because this is the line we're going to cut. And there we go. Second point. Perfect. Now, what does that angle look like? Of course, flip it over. Bring this around. Oh, there I caught the camera. Here we go. Turn it over. Cut the last side. And boom. There we are. And this is all the fabric we've lost from that strip. I can't help it. Like so many quilters, I'm very stingy with my fabric. I don't like it to go to waste. So, we've got our points. 
that come together in the middle. And of course, if you had stacked those, we would have lots and lots of points. And there's the diamond. Now we cut a yellow diamond, didn't we? There we go. If your school colors are yellow and blue, you're ready to go. So let's start stitching. All right, let's start piecing diamonds as if we're going to make the chubby star that's formed with five diamonds. We're going to start with right sides together, of course. Line up one of the sides. Now on the diamonds, all of the sides are the same. So, and we match points. And if you want to use a pin, you can pin. I often skip that step because I use cottons that tend to cling to each other. So pins are not always necessary. But what might be helpful the first time you work with the stars is to come here and make a dot right where the two quarter inch seams would meet. And the same down here. Although you're only going to have one seam, you still want to leave those seam allowances free. Now you'll start Now you'll notice I've got the fabric to my right and the seam allowance to my left. That's because I'm going to drop the needle just slightly away from that dot and stitch forward so that my needle stops exactly on that dot. I never want to go beyond the quarter inch mark. We leave all of the seam allowances free on all of our stars. Then I pivot and now I'm going to stitch straight back quarter inch seam to that thought. I'm going to stop right there. Now I have a couple of big dogs in the room that have decided this is a good time to play, so that's what you're hearing. Once I hit that dot, I'm going to pivot again and go right back along the original seam. That secures my stitching and I leave that seam free. Here's the seam we just stitched, putting these two diamonds together. I'm going to bring in one more diamond. Move this over so you can see. As we continue to make the chubby star, it helps to lay out the pieces as you want them to be. Put a piece up here, and you see that doesn't work. So laying them out, because all of these seams are exactly the same, all of these edges are exactly the same, it helps to lay them out each time. Right sides together, matching points. in there. Get it a little more even. Now of course you won't be trying to work in front of a camera and you'll be able to do this a lot more quickly and accurately than I can right here. Again, I'm going to put a target point right there, a target dot, quarter inch from the edge, from both edges. So I will not stitch past that dot. And now coming down here, 
I've got seam allowances. So I'm going to fold this back and then this out of the way. Let me do that again. There's the seam we already did. Fold that seam allowance down and this one out of the way. So now you have room to come in here and match those corners. And you can pin this. Now I'm going to turn this over so I can see that's where I'm stitching to. So I'm going to come forward to this, put the needle down right there, turn it around, and stitch back this way. Let's do that one more time so that you really see how it's done. Okay. It would be nice if I had an overhead camera here. Okay. I put that needle down about three stitches away from the seam that I'm going to meet. Stop with the needle down, pivot. Now I'm going to stitch all the way back to the next end. Okay, I'm heading right here to where the quarter inch seam allowances match. Now this time I'll just back stitch. Turn this around a little bit. Okay, there's the end of the seam. Here's the beginning. And all of these seam allowances with these little dog ears are free. That's what we want. Now you see here, I'm just shy of meeting that other line of stitching. I could have maybe taken one more stitch and landed right on top. That would be ideal. But that didn't happen. And you know what? that's okay because as you continue and have all five points together you're going to press all of the seam allowances to one side in other words the seam allowances go like this and that closes up that little space in between seams. You'll see this better on another example. Let's move on to the points. Here are the blue points that we cut. And the pointy stars have edges that are a very different length. We have short edges and long edges. We begin by putting the short edges of the points together. I'm not going to stitch all of these on camera because it works exactly the same as the chubby star. And here you see I've already put a dot where those quarter inch seams meet. And this is the dot we're headed to this angle right here. So that those points will come together. You'll stitch beginning just short, 
stitch toward the dot, then leave your needle down, pivot, and stitch back along, quarter inch seam to this dot, and then back stitch or pivot to secure the seam, leaving all your quarter inch seam allowances free. Here's a sample that I've already stitched, putting three points together. I put the bobbin thread in green and the needle thread in a bright orange so you can see pretty clearly what I'm doing. You can see just as we did with the diamonds, we stop a quarter inch from either fabric edge. Okay, down here at the points, quarter inch from either fabric edge so that all of these seam allowances are free and the dog ears are free. And this is how we do it if this has been stitched. I'm going to add another point to the star and push the seam allowance down out of the way. Let's see if you can get this straight for me. Push the seam allowance down out of the way, fold it back, and that allows you to match like that. And then I turn it over. So that was the bobbin stitch. Here's the top stitch. So that becomes my dot that I'm stitching toward. And I can put a dot down here, quarter of an inch. And as you can see, that's exactly the same when we fit the diamonds in to make the pentagon. Exactly the same. Quarter inch left free. Down here. A quarter inch left free. When you add another diamond, you're going to do the same thing. Matching those angles and leaving yourself a quarter of an inch seam allowance always. And it's best to see where you're going, to lay the star out as you're working on it so you can see where all the pieces go. Like that. And here's a finished piece star pentagon block with the points and the diamonds in place. Again, you can see that all of the seam allowances are free. I know I'm saying that over and over again, but it's so different from so many of the other quilt blocks that we make. There, those met perfectly. Looks pretty good. This is what you look for. And if one of them has a little air, like this, when it's pressed together, that closes up just like that. The very same principle applies on each of these inserts. If you leave a little air, there's a good example, between the lines of stitches, as long as it's no more than one, one and a half stitches, no worries. Because when you press it, those seams come together and close up that point. In the very center of the star, believe it or not, the same thing applies. 
you leave all these dog ears free when you're stitching. And there you see, there's a little bit of air. That's about almost two full stitches. When you press the center of the star, if you happen to have dark and light, you ignore that when you're pressing and press all the seams in one direction. I tend to press counterclockwise. If you press clockwise, that's perfectly fine as long as they're all going in the same direction. And then all these little dog ears in the center open up. And if I can get that in the light, they form their own little star in miniature right there. And like a lens of a camera, it closes up in the middle. So here you have the five-pointed star in the pentagon block. All pieced together, pressed and complete, made with the Star Stars ruler. Now if you've enjoyed this video, please go down and click like. And if you'd like to see other videos and other examples of projects made with this ruler, just subscribe to my channel. And to get your own ruler, go to my shop, which is Star Stuff on Etsy. Even easier, all you need to do is type in Stars Ruler with two R's, Stars Ruler on Etsy and you'll go directly to my shop. Thank you so much. I appreciate your watching.